Every trader knows there are huge days in the market, and of course everybody wants to get lucky and hit those, but what if I told you there is a way that you could actually plan out on a calendar, as long as you have a special type of calendar that we talk about, again, doesn't have to be special, but I'm going to show you guys the type that I use tonight on how we plan it out, how do I know what events are coming up, and special events that happen every quarter, things that happen on, during the week. We're going to talk about things like what uh, what time of the month, what day of the week, and what hours during the daytime that these big opportunities can occur. And I'm going to show you how to analytically know when that is. This is a big task here tonight, but I hope you guys will smash that like button before we get started. And hang tight! Let's cover this very, very difficult topic for most traders. And let's smash it, shall we? We shall. Let's do this. Alrighty then, so if this is your first time with us, welcome aboard. I'm a little rusty, it's been a while since we came out here and did some of these, but hopefully you guys follow us over here on Facebook, forget Twitter, hit us up on Instagram, and of course here on YouTube, we've got a few uh, a few YouTube channels divided up there for you by category. I'm turning this music all the way down because it's a little bit distracting for me. Um, hope that's going to be okay with you guys. Um, let's let's keep it, um, here we go, Let's let's keep it. Let's keep it all the way down here at like a 1%. How about that? Is that all right with you guys? Excellent. All right, sorry for that. Technical difficulties. Let's get into this topic. So what is this calendar I was holding up there a minute ago? This is a calendar from Econo Day. Um, again, I'm not plugging them or anything. You do not have to buy it, get no kickbacks from it. But this is what I like to get. This is from Econo Day. And you can get this from their website. I'll put a link down below in the description. Of course, you can get us there in the Discord chat as well. This is the 2021 version of the calendar. And internal, they have all of those events that you go and look at Forex Factory. You know how that is. But it's nice to have it on a piece of paper. I'm going to show you guys why. Uh, we want to look out in advance to know what times of the month. What uh, Again, I usually plan by month. And... Uh, we can look at it by the year, but you know who's really going to plan out their stuff at the year? We really want to know week by week, month over month, when are going to be the good trade opportunities, how to execute and when to execute, and all that good stuff. Now, of course, um, with the way that we do things around here, you're going to be a little bit lost. I'm not going to be able to teach you everything here tonight, obviously, so I would encourage you guys, if you haven't done already, of course, smash that like button, hit the notifications icon so you can see when things come out. But you need to come over here to the website and click on Strategy Training Video Library if you're a little bit lost. I am not going to cover everything. It's impossible for me to do that in one single video, of course, but we do have that over here. If you come to our strategy training video library, here are those videos lined out. This is library number one. If you want to go to library number two, click right here. We've revamped the website so you guys can have these very, very quickly. Library three, library four, go on, etc. If you watch these in order, you're going to, get a, going to get a great idea of how we operate and how we do things here in the room, and that's the best way to kind of get that going. So. Let's uh, come down into our Discord trade room. If you're not in Discord already, of course, you are missing out. There's a link down in the description as well. Of course, you can get there on our website if you're trying to wonder, well, how do I get into the Discord trade room with the rest of your crew there? And I'm going to show you guys how you can download and print some of these calendar events that we've got, as well as, of course, the Econo Day right here. All right. Now, I have. <laughs> it's hard for me to get all this in. Again, we're just doing this off the cuff, so hang with me here. The, the hard copy is extremely important, but I also think that you need to print yourself out one of those calendars to also track your stats, to track um, kind of month over month. If you're tracking your business, you need to be able to see your red days and your green days. As simple as that. As long as you have a calendar where you're tracking red and green and how much that is, that way you can kind of keep on pace. A lot of people have a big, a big problem shifting from a nine to five uh, mentality of, of making their, their money over, you know, I work X number of hours, I get X number of dollars and I am budgeting on a monthly basis. And that's good. But when you shift into a business mindset in trading, this is one of those things that people really struggle with. This really tends to help. Now, this little calendar, um, you can print this one out or if you want to make your own, that's fine. Again, here is our expectation in our room. This is, if you're, this is like not even doing well. If you are just, uh, this is middle of the road, okay? We're usually maybe like one or two red days per month as of right now. Again, anything can change. The markets can shift. Um, but as of right now, we're looking for 14 win days, six loss days max, okay? And of course, you'll learn how we do that in our program. 
Um, but let's talk about how do how do we know what events are going to come out? We always get this common question on, well, Vinny, what day of the week is best to trade? What hours of the day are best to trade? And it's a little bit of a difficult conversation to approach. A lot of people have a lot of opinions on it. I'm going to give you guys kind of my, my opinion as well as some evidence to back up why I say these things. It is... I hate giving these type of answers, but this is the nature of the beast. There is no way to determine exactly when you should be able to trade. Um, I usually teach people to, with our strategy, that you are coming in and you are going to trade on your schedule. Um, I really don't care what time of day you're going to come into the markets. It, you know, some people are like, oh, you got to be in in the morning, you got to be in the afternoon. Now, I do not want you doing overnight trading. Um, but let's talk about intraday first. We're going to start from the smallest time frame and start to work out to a crescendo with how I'm going to tell you how if you want to plan out what I call your bonus days, where you're going to know when the markets are really going to get hopping um, and how we plan and trade those days, uh, I'm going to show you guys that at the end. So let's start from the smallest and work our way up. So if you go into our room and type in exclamation mark sessions, um, this little graphic from one of our videos again you can go watch those videos in those videos that i showed you guys from the website there a little bit ago but on the sessions we are looking into breaking our day up into one two three this is not really a section right here and four okay that is just happens to be i'm just kind of designating when i tend to start in the afternoon when i'm doing the afternoon session this is kind of my peak time when I want to get into the markets. I really like trading the end of the day. I like it for a lot of reasons. I go over that in that video and you'll go through those on the website there. But this is the breakdown per session per day. To the hour, when do I want to be trading? That is, I'm, I'm telling you with our system, it does not matter when you trade. Think about what I just said. It does not matter what time of day you trade. Now, with a caveat, overnight, I do not recommend people trading overnight. However, now again, we're talking about US session. If you are outside the United States, that is a little bit different for you. So let's talk about sessions two, exclamation mark, sessions two. Okay, so this is the nighttime session. There are advantages. I will not go over all this stuff here tonight, but know that we care about knowing what time am I sitting down at my desk, okay? How do you plan your day? Well whatever you need to do again uh, for us you know we we're dealing with covid stuff and things and now homeschooling our children and all that so we have a little bit of a different morning schedule than i used to when i was kind of you know young and <laughs> it was all the way back when i was uh, single and no children as you progress in your life everybody changes and you know you you work trading around your schedule with our system now again Everything that I'm saying here tonight applies to Algobox and our strategy, the way that we trade. We are here to give freedom of time, and I'll show you guys how we do some of that by the, the hours that we trade, the numbers of trades that we take, um, and of course, how to maximize that. Now, so if I'm gonna say, well, I would like, uh, I'm in the morning, I'm gonna be uh, working with my kids, okay? So I can't really do the morning session because uh, I'm you know, doing training for the kids and things, whatever. But I oftentimes, I'll come in right here at this beast mode hour. Now, what is beast mode hour? Um, it's not just a single hour. It's a little bit longer than that, almost an uh, hour and a half, two hours there for that window of time. But what, what do I know about that time period? Okay, we're gonna go watch our video on how I approach the beast mode hour. But basically, you need to know that I wanna have an idea of the type of session that I'm going to approach. Now. Let's give an example that everybody knows. Look, the morning as the open comes, right? You get a lot of momentum and directions. You get a lot of shifting around. You get a lot of, uh, of action. And again, if that's, if that's your style of trade, you like that quick in, like that quick out type of stuff, the morning session you know, is there. And again, it really doesn't matter if you like it or not. If I'm going in at the open, I have an expectation of what I expect at that moment in time. Okay. If I'm coming in at 11, I actually know that things kind of tend to smooth out here. Things get, might be a little bit slower. Now, that's not every day. But what I'm looking for at this time of day, I'll tell you guys, I'm looking for the big pivot, right? And the shift and turn. And if it is a day that's going to run, this is the time to get the absolute biggest. If you're going to be trying to hold out a big trade or trying to push out the big one, this is the time to catch that turning point where we push into the end of the day, right? So I know what time and what types of trades. I can look for bigger trades during this time window, right? In the morning, I'm still really trying to get in and out, right? Um, Target one, target two. But in this section right here, right, we know we're looking for some bigger trades. What about the 220 to 1010? 
Um, again, I'm kind of going into a lot of detail this. I'm going to leave this here because you need to go into other videos because I really want to focus on some bigger time frames. But I want to point out, starting at the lowest, all the way down to the hour when you're sitting at your desk, when? So to answer the question number one, what time of day, Vinny? I will tell you, it doesn't matter. I will ask you, as your mentor, what time of day are you best suited to sit at your desk? Think about that question. Write it down. What time of day are you personally suited at best to sit down at your desk? Okay. And by that, I will help you and dictate to you what type of strategies you're looking for. Again, we have about a baker's dozen of those. If you haven't seen some of those, head on over to the left-hand side in the education section and look at the actual strategies themselves. We'll go over those a little bit at the very end, just to give you, you know, the new folks a peek at that. But most people who are hanging out here with hanging out here with us tonight are looking for some of the more big picture stuff because you guys already know the strategies um, and you want to know some of the big picture stuff. How do I plan out my business? Okay, now, so we go from the hour to the day, right? What about the days of the week, Vinny? Um, you know, is, is Monday better than Friday? Um, let's look at this one, okay? Um, Mondays, Tuesdays, what's, what's best? So um, there is no specific best day of trading, but there are some things that are very, very consistent. Um, again, we're trading futures and I still know, I'll tell you that the, the stock market and everything else actually goes around the futures. Have you guys ever noticed that when you watch CNBC in the mornings that the first thing they're going to tell you about is, hey, what are the futures markets doing? Oh, the futures markets are up this morning. Why? Because we get to trade 23.5. What does that mean? 23 hours a day, five days a week, the futures markets are still moving. The US markets and stock markets, what? They close, they open, they close. Same with the Nikkei, all of those uh, markets around the world, they have open and close times. Futures markets, we're open, right? We're moving. So we kind of dictate how things go. So what does that mean? Things like contract rollover. This is a big thing. Options expirations. These things impact the markets and we can take advantage of those. Earnings report season. These are some big ones that we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. But what about the day of the week? Okay, right down to the day of the week. What impacts days of the week? Well, we have some things in our room that we talk about. Okay, on a on a Monday, um, let's go to blue here. Okay, so Monday, what do we expect? We expect slow. However, does that mean that any given Monday we can't just explode and have some big big movement? No. In fact, we have that on a regular basis. But I always want to set the expectation. What day are you sitting down? When you're sitting down in your desk, you wake up in the morning, you're like, ah, what day is it? Okay, Monday. First thing I tell you, think slow. All right, it's a good day in my opinion to wait until that midday session or the afternoon session if you're normally a morning person. Um, the Monday morning stuff, you might want to eh, maybe move it back a little bit because quite frankly, the action really doesn't get going most of the time on a Monday unless there were some things from the week before that were pushing it or things that can change things like what? Earnings reports, okay? Earnings is a big, big deal. We talk about the two weeks around earnings. That That's some of our best times of the year to trade. That's kind of bonus time. Just like if you're in a normal job, you're like, oh, well, a normal job, I'm making X number of dollars per, per month and week. But I know that, oh, come, you know, mid quarter for your salesperson, uh, I'm sorry, middle of the year or at the end of a quarter, you get to sit down with your boss. They look at how you've done your performance and you might have additional bonuses coming in. We have that same thing with the markets. We want to plan our bonus time uh, like a business. OK, and I'll show you guys that on the calendar in the big picture here in just a minute. Moving on our way up. OK, so Monday I'm thinking slow, but can be affected by the higher time frame. Right. Which is what the monthly. OK. Tuesday, man, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. This is what we kind of call the sweet spot. Okay. If I had to pick days of the week that I want to trade. Yeah, I definitely want, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to trade. Oops. That one. There we go. Okay. I would love to trade those three, three days of the week. If, um, if I, if I had to choose. Okay. Um, now what do we have on, what do we not have on Tuesday that we have on Wednesdays and Thursdays? So Wednesdays, Wacky Wednesday, we've got crude oil inventories typically coming out on Wednesday, okay? So we always want to know when that news event is, 1030, already scheduled. Now, what happens if you have a holiday? If you have a holiday, that moves over to a Thursday, okay? Again, these are big picture things that if you are, if you're trying to master trading, you need to know these things. I want to put this in the caveat to say if you are in our program and you're learning our strategies, is this absolutely 100% necessary to know these things? No. In fact, you can trade our system blanket the way that it's designed. We are trading this like a video game. But if you want to plan your size, if you want to plan um, how 
uh, your bonus time, like if you're really trying to push it, if you're trying to become the best trader you could possibly be, obviously you want to know these things. So again, just those of you who are like a little bit starting to get overwhelmed by this, don't be, okay? Because it is absolutely not necessary. You can come in, sit down at your desk, do exactly what we always do every day and execute on the strategy setups, headshot, two finger salutes, HMD, Delta, uh, double cross, double move, clusters. Look, you see them show up on the chart, take them, okay? Now, but how do we know if those are gonna go to target three? This is where the rubber, this is where the, the, the rubber meets the road here. This is the difference between the trader making a few hundred dollars a day and the trader making a few thousand dollars a day, knowing that, you know what, I'm gonna go in some extra contracts and I'm pushing some out for some runners. This is having perspective of the big picture coming in. What? Remember, you can always get this from the higher time frame as well, off of the tide and the wave charts on our higher time frame, which we also, you know, teach you guys how to do. But if you're wondering, well, what about the extra stuff that's going on, like the inauguration that we just had, which we will talk about here in just a moment. Okay. So again, probably sounds like oh, Vinny's babbling on. Look, uh, just just so much to teach. I, I'm just trying to get it all in. Okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, favorites. Now, why Thursday, man? If you're going to trade overnight, okay, you guys hear me when I talk about this in the sessions too. Okay. Wednesday to Thursday is the time for those of you guys in, um, you know, outside the United States. If you're going to be trading your, you know, afternoon time or morning or whatever, and you're up, look, this is the day to do it. Wednesday to Thursday. Okay. Our overnight is your playground. Why? Because on Thursday and Friday, you have payroll numbers. Okay. You've got unemployment and you've got non-farm payrolls, NFPs. You hear them called that a lot. Those are coming out on Thursdays and Fridays. So you get this extra boost around the Wednesday to Thursday time. Okay. So you get a lot of activity on both of those days. All right. So then Friday. Now, Friday is our, what I call early in, early out. We have, uh, you know, historically over time, again, I've been doing this for 15 years. My Fridays in the past were not great. I'll tell you, our system, uh, like over time, we have gotten so much better, right? We've got audio box now. We've got Flowmaster. We've got the Delta. These huge, extremely powerful tools, including our harmonics that are full auto now, um, are really putting things into a new perspective. Friday is no longer a danger day, right? I might have said in the past, if you guys have seen old, old videos from about five years back, Friday was a little bit of a tougher day. Our tools have developed now to a point where um man friday is not even a, it's not even a challenge anymore okay we are so op now completely overpowered that even friday is nothing to be scared of so for me personally this has now become more of more of a personal choice day for me to try to plan my day um you know for the family where you know i'm just spending more time with the family catching up with uh, things here in the room, all that kind of stuff. And it's really more of personal choice than it is strategy. Um, but Friday, we get that early morning boost. I still think, again, early in, early out. You guys know the rules on that for a Friday. So perspective of the day per week, what days are best? Again, middle of the week, I think are best. Especially, I'm telling you that Thursday. Like if you were just, if you had to pick one day a week to trade, if you asked me that question, what day would I tell you to trade? Just one day. If you had one day a week to trade, I would literally say Thursday because you also have the most amount of activity coming in on all different things. You have the previous day stuff from crude oil inventories. You have those getting moved over to Thursdays on occasion. You have FOMC happening on Wednesdays at two o'clock that has carryover into Thursdays. Um, you also have uh, earnings reports. When you see earnings reports week, what you will find is that the maximum amount of earnings reports are released on Thursdays. So I'll give you know some rough numbers. You may see um, like maybe 50 to 100 come out on Monday, maybe 200-ish on Tuesday, Wednesday, okay, 100 to 200. But Thursday, you will see 300 to 400 plus, you know, coming in on a Thursday on earnings reports. And that's huge, okay? You can get some big, you get everybody planning ahead, moving their position, adjusting their position, trying to take advantage of dividends, all of that lands on Thursdays, okay? So everybody got that? Thursdays, if I had to pick a day, that's your day. Because VIX up, ticks up. Around here, the higher the VIX, the more the ticks. I saw somebody do a review on us recently, a little bit disappointed um, that they said, well, the time that Vinny's room struggles is when the VIX is high. Yeah, he actually got that wrong. I think he might've been a little bit newer with us and hadn't been around long enough. 
that's actually the opposite. Most rooms have problems with high VIX. Our high VIX for us is more ticks, right? We actually don't like grinders. So those of you guys, you know, trying to catch up on reviews, somebody put some review on Future Style recently and uh, so if anybody wants to issue a correction, they got it mixed up on when the, when the VIX is on the move and we're getting movement, man, that's our bread and butter. We get more opportunities and our system is pinpoint entry uh, accuracy. So the more of those that we get, the better. We don't like the grinder days. In fact, days like today, we'll go over that a little bit at the very, very end. But so if you're taking notes, we don't like the grinder days, the slow days, those are, eh. all right. You just don't, you just don't give as much, you don't get as much opportunity, period. Okay. So a little bit lower p &L opportunities. Um, then Friday. So there we go. We covered our week. So day by day. So now what everybody's been waiting for, I hope, is the calendar. What do we do with the calendar? This, look, a lot of people talk about day of the week. A lot of people talk about hours, but not a lot of people go and address this big guy right here. Okay. This is important. Now, again, any given day, you can go to forexfactory.com, look at the news events that day, but I like to open up, flip to the next month, and even you know right now as we're coming up to the final week of the month, to flip the books over to the next month to see where those big news events are going to be. And what are big news events? Let's kind of come back down here and start to talk about lists of things that we might want to know when these events occur, okay? Um, we want to know FOMC, kind of a big one, right? Uh, I joke about FOMC standing for fear of market conditions, right? Um, we want, we already talked about this earlier, earnings reports, okay? This is a, this is a two week window of time where we have, you know, we can do max damage if you're talking about uh, gaming terms, where we get such huge opportunities um, when those come. Those have been some of our biggest trading days on those earnings reports, the VIX up, ticks up. Those are awesome days. Um, we're looking around the first of quarter. Oh, okay, so let's let's do contract rollover. Now there is there are several videos of this on contract rollover. Um, you need to know some things about this. This is one where if you are particularly trading futures, you need to understand contract rollover. I'm going to give you the short version. There are things that roll over once a month. Crude oil, it's a good one. Ones that roll over every two months, like gold. There are gold and, and uh, some other, uh, any of the metals, right? Uh, then you have things that roll over every quarter, okay? Every quarter, um, that is, that's our primary right there. We got all of our E-minis, that's the ES, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell. Um, let's see, I feel like there's one I'm missing in there. Oh yeah, and the 60 uh, currencies. Right, currencies also. So that's the primary one every quarter. So how do you know when that's going to occur? Well, right there on your on your calendar, and they always roll over at the same time. Um, so contract rollover is is a good one, especially with the bucket system. If you know about the buckets, um, you know you you need to go watch my videos. If you don't know about them, let's just put it that way. Okay, um, you know that if you're in one contract month and you need to fill the next. Okay, this thing's full when it starts out. It's low and you've got to get all those contracts over here. If they are going to readjust their position, this has to get filled, this has to empty, okay? So that means on one side, if we're up at the highs and they're all you know, purchased, they've got a long bias, they've got to sell all those before it's up and then they've got to go into the next bucket. So you see a big shift right here. We can get some big opportunities in both directions on those contract rollover days. So good to look at your calendar to know when those are coming ahead. Mark them on your calendar being like, yes, this, there are about three days there where that volatility really kicks up and we can wait for that big move. What time, right? Come back to that time of day thing, right? Three to 3.30 ish, right? Big moves on what? Both of these, right? Time of day on both of these when we talk about those, right? So um, next one, contract rollover. And FOMC, earnings reports. Um, okay, just in general, end of quarter. And beginning of month. And 15th of the month. Some people don't think about this. Okay, we'll talk about why. So, 
end of the quarter. Um, what quarter are we in? I should have probably maybe put that that way as well. Okay, you need to know what quarter we're in. The final quarter of the year, biggest quarter of the year, typically, right? We're gonna get the most movement around things because, you know, look, there's all kinds of reasons why at the end of the year, you got Christmas, Black Friday, Thanksgiving, holidays, you've got um, companies trying to, to, to meet numbers, all kinds of reasons why people shifting out of positions, closing out their stuff for the year, reinitiating in the following year, all that kind of stuff comes up there um, in the final quarter of the year versus the first. Now, summertime, right? Summertime doldrums, if you wanna take some time off, all right summer right summertime a little bit of slow everybody says uh, sell in may and go away you guys might have heard that or maybe not summertime months a little bit slow that quarter is going to be a little bit more tricky in general for us particularly because again it's slow so you know again <laughs> gonna talk about that futures io um review that somebody put out there a little bit inaccurate on that uh higher the vix more the ticks for us and our system so summertime a little bit tougher um beginning of the month so what happens at the beginning of the month 401k money comes into the markets it must be allocated there is no option for that to be so you know you have a forced mandate for um for those to be filled so look at the first of the month you know that lots and lots of people get paid on the first of the month now why more so around the first of the month versus the 15th because some people are only paid once per month so which one is better 15th of the month or the first right? In my opinion, the first of the month, okay? You're going to get the most amount of volatility, plus you get a little bit of the end of the month stuff right there. So beginning of the month, first, second, third, fourth of the month, okay? That first week inside of a month, this is going to be the best times uh, for that movement as well, especially around times if people received bonuses. That happens to be another thing about the end of quarter over here. People are anticipating those bonuses or receiving them here in the first. So here in January, another great month. Um, again, shoot, that was a huge first week already uh, this year as well. That movement comes in, bonuses come in, they get allocated, all that kind of good stuff, beginning of the month. And most people who get paychecks, again, you get the, um, if, if it's not, well, most people are paid, you know, maybe at the end of the month, right? But it's gonna be paid there at the first, get allocated on the first. And then you got the people who are paid every two weeks, okay? That tends to happen around that time. And then you got people who are paid um, twice per month, but that always guarantees that they're coming in the first of the month. So again, lots of reasons why we get extra volatility at the beginning of the month, just in general, if you're looking at the calendar, okay? 15th of the month, why there? Only a little bit extra there because you're gonna get that oomph from the people getting paid in the uh, middle of the month, right? now. That also can sometimes fall on a schedule where people are getting paid every two weeks. That's a whole nother gambit because that's just, that's different. That's not applying to this. So really we're more and more talking about the people getting paid in the first and 15th, which there are a whole lot of people in the US and outside the US um, that have that, but our, the 401k money has to be uh, allocated immediately. There is no choice for that. So those algos have to kick off to start to fill those positions in the mornings. So we get that great movement off of that. Um, so just some notes there on the month. Now, how do I like to do it? I like to actually circle my days. It's as simple as circling them so I can look at a month at a glance and I can see right here what days that I'm really looking forward to. I'm like, okay, yeah, huge, huge. So I can tell like today is the 21st. I'm right here on Thursday. Next week, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, if like, you know, this week were tough for some reason, it's nice to be able to look ahead and go, yeah, so I had a couple of, of issues this week, didn't hit my targets, that's okay. Next week... I get some big opportunities on Tuesday, and Wednesday, you know, mentally you're preparing yourself. Does that change what you're able to execute? No, but I think if you mentally prepare for what you're about to, um, you know, approach, I, I think that that is extremely handy. So put it on that calendar, circle them like I do. And if you want to label them or do something more, if you guys have suggestions for what you guys like to do in your, in your calendar or suggestions for me, you know, let me know, uh, put it down in the comments, um, you know, and maybe we'll talk about it in our next video, do a little highlight on it, but that is what I wanted to cover from the big picture. Now, so is there anything bigger than at the month and the quarter level? Not really, right? What year? I could talk about eight year cycles if you want, but dude, that got blown out of the way, <laughs> out of the water um, a few years ago when people used to talk about the yearly cycles. And now that the central banks are controlling a lot of things, I think that whole cycle stuff kind of almost got flushed and is now superficially controlled um, and inflation and everything else that is kind of goes along with that. So that's it. Those are, that's it. Down to the hour, the day, the month, 
and the quarter. Okay. If you guys have questions, put them down in the comments. Come over to our chat box. I'm going to show you guys some things in the chat box. Um, as far as you know, our room and uh, some of the results, I mean, our guys are absolutely killing it. If you guys have not been in our room before, again, welcome aboard. Come hang out with us. It is free. Um, our, I have our members go ahead and post their results. I think that's a big thing. I think people enjoy that um that transparency and you know we just put out the stats right there so you can see them uh, we also put in the actual trades that we take themselves again the way that we approach the markets very specific um i'm gonna give you guys a little hint on what we show tomorrow if you guys are come back tomorrow again make sure you enable that um that icon i'm gonna show you guys the cluster strategy tomorrow come down here to we need to go to Flowmaster. There she is. All right. So people have been asking about the cluster strategy. Again, we are going to be talking about that one tomorrow. It will be Friday. This is what we're going to be talking about. So when you see the cluster crosses, highly, highly visual. All right. How to know what we're going to do, how to know the difference between that and a double cross, double move. Okay. How to know when this is going to apply. When it's not, we will look at both sides as usual. So cluster strategy, talking about tomorrow. So come hang out and check out that video on Friday. There we go. We are right there at 30 minutes. Got that in in a half hour. I am super excited about those of you guys who are with us. Don't forget, oh shoot, well, I gotta hit this. Uh, this is not a sales pitch, folks, but I just gotta tell you, people do get disappointed when they don't know what's up, but there are 10 days left for that gold and then gold goes away. We fill up the seats in January. We open up the seats in January. Once those 50 spots are gone, see ya. No more gold. All right, folks. Um, that discount is there on the website if you guys want to take advantage of that. And that is a wrap. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Don't forget, early in, early out on Friday. Happy Friday if you're just watching this later on. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis, G, and the rest of the gang. Let's send out the Big H Town. See ya.